we're going to be talking about how to calculate the effects of price controls on particular goods. The market we're going to look at today is actually one that I just learned recently actually does use price controls. Last weekend I was in France with a friend and I learned that the price of baguettes in France are actually controlled by the French government. On a daily basis the French government adjusts the price of baguettes so that it benefits either producers or consumers of baguettes. I found this interesting. So we'll use the market for baguettes in France in order to examine the effects of price controls. So let's assume that the quantity demanded for baguettes is determined by the equation 200 minus 25p and the quantity supplied is determined by the equation negative 20 plus 19p. Let's begin by calculating the equilibrium price and quantity of baguettes in France and deriving our demand and supply curves using these two equations. The first thing we can do is calculate equilibrium price. Let's set the two equations equal to each other. So we've got the demand equals 200 minus 25p and we'll set that equal to the supply of negative 20 plus 19p. We'll move the two prices to the same side of the equation. We'll see that 44p equals 220 and if we divide 220 by 44 and divide this side by 44, we see that the equilibrium price of baguettes in France is 5. This refers to euros. In a moment we will draw our supply and demand curves and we'll see this equilibrium price on the graph on the right. But first let's find the equilibrium quantity. We'll plug the 5 euros into either the demand or supply equation. So we can see that the QD, the quantity demanded, will equal 200 minus 25 times 5, which is 200 minus 120. 25, the equilibrium quantity will equal 75 baguettes. Now we've shown the equilibrium quantity will be 75 so let's plot the quantity and price on our graph over here. We'll have an equilibrium price of 5 and an equilibrium quantity of 75. But we do not yet have our demand, equa our demand curve and our supply curve. So let's do the necessary calculations in order to draw our demand and supply curves. In order to derive the demand curve, we must find the price intercept. We know that in the demand for baguettes, the Q intercept, where it will begin on the quantity axis, is at 200. In order to find the P intercept, we can set the quantity equal to 0 and solve for P. So we find 0 equals 200 minus 25P. So 25P equals 200 divide both sides by 25 and we should see that the price at which the quantity demanded for baguettes is equal to zero will be at eight euros. So our demand curve will have two points along it and we already know the equilibrium point so we can now draw our demand curve by connecting these points and that lines up perfectly. There's our demand for baguettes. Next let's uh, derive our supply equation, our supply curve. We want to find the p-intercept so we can set qs equal to 0 and solve for p. Divide both sides by 19 and the price at which the supply curve will begin is 1 euro and 5 cents. So that gives us our p-intercept. We can put point right there and now all we have to do is connect our supply curve so that it intersects the demand curve at the equilibrium price. So there's our supply of baguettes. Now we can see the market for baguettes in equilibrium assuming there is no government intervention at all. We have an equilibrium price of 5 euros and an equilibrium quantity of 75 baguettes. The next question is what effect will maximum and minimum price controls in the market for baguettes have on the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Let's start with a price floor. A price floor is a minimum price below which the price of baguettes is not allowed to fall. So we'll set a price floor in this graph at 6 euros and let's examine the impact of this minimum price on the market for baguettes. So we'll call that PF for our price floor. Of course the purpose of this price floor would be to help the producers of baguettes by raising the price above the free market equilibrium price. As we can see it's fairly clear that the higher price will lead to a lower quantity demanded for baguettes but because baguette producers 
can now make more than they could before for every baguette they produce the quantity supplied will increase so what we want to determine is how much will the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied be this will tell us our surplus of baguettes resulting from the price floor so it should be very simple all we have to do is plug six into the demand equation and six into the supply equation so let's start with demand the quantity demanded at the price floor of six euros will be 200 minus 25 times six which equals 200 minus 150 which equals 50 so the quantity demanded will be only 50 baguettes we can put that on our graph here next let's calculate the quantity supplied at the price floor of six euros all we have to do is plug six into our supply equation so we get qs equals negative 20 plus 19 times 6 which equals negative 20 plus 114 which tells us the quantity supplied is 94 baguettes so now we can see that at a price of 6 euros 94 baguettes will be supplied now we can look at a graph and it should be very simple to calculate the amount of the surplus in the market for baguettes since producers of baguettes will make 94,000 and consumers will only demand 50,000 there will be a surplus of 44,000 baguettes not surprisingly the price floor leads to a disequilibrium in the market for baguettes the quantity demanded will be lower than the quantity supplied consumers will only wish to buy 50,000 baguettes but producers will manufacture 94,000 baguettes of course we can continue our analysis by examining the effect of the price floor on consumer and producer surplus which as we showed in a previous lesson is negative overall because the increase in producer surplus that results from the higher price shaded here in green is offset by the net loss of consumer and producer surplus represented by the purple triangle so what we've done here is we've calculated the effect of a price floor on the market for baguettes in France. The price floor transfers welfare from consumers of baguettes to producers of baguettes, but leads to a surplus of 44,000 baguettes and a net loss of welfare equal to the purple triangle. It would be rather easy actually to calculate the amounts of consumer and producer surplus and the amount of deadweight loss simply by finding the areas of the three shaded colors here. Of course, we won't go into that in this lesson. Um, that is something you may be asked to do, though, however, on an IB higher level examination. Let's continue our analysis by examining the effect that a price ceiling in the market for baguettes would have. As we know, a price ceiling is a maximum price above which the price of baguettes would not be allowed to rise. We'll choose a price ceiling on a graph here of 3 euros per baguette. So let's set a price ceiling down here at 3, and we'll calculate the effects that this price ceiling has on equilibrium in the market for baguettes. So let's calculate the quantity demanded at a price of 3 euros. QD will be 200 minus 25 times 3, which is 200 minus 75. So the quantity demanded of baguettes will now be 125 baguettes. We can label that on our graph here. And next, let's calculate the quantity supplied. The quantity supplied will be negative 20 plus 19 times Three, which is negative 20 plus 57 and only therefore only 37 baguettes will be supplied we can label that on a graph here 37 will be the quantity supplied uh, next it should be very easy to calculate the amount of excess demand or the shortage that exists in the market for baguettes whereas 125,000 baguettes will be demanded only 37 baguettes will be supplied or 37,000 this leaves a shortage of 88,000 baguettes so what is the effect of the price ceiling in the market for baguettes clearly those consumers who are able to buy baguettes are only going to pay three euros however there is a much greater quantity demanded than the quantity supplied so a price ceiling transfers welfare from producers of baguettes to the consumers who get to pay a lower price the new area of consumer surplus which we could calculate using our numbers on this graph but we will not at this time is the yellow area shaded here the new area of producer surplus 
is clearly smaller because producers are only able to sell their baguettes for three euros now and they're only going to make 37,000 baguettes whereas before they were making 75,000 baguettes. So the net loss of total welfare in the market for baguettes is once again visible as the purple triangle. Again, using linear equations, we can calculate the actual amount of surplus or the amount of the shortage created by price floors and price ceilings. If we took a little bit extra time, we could actually calculate the effect on consumer and producer surplus and total welfare by finding the areas of the different triangles and shapes that we have shaded on our graphs.